Have you noticed? My daughter walked outside this week and smiled. Mom, it smells like spring. Here in the Midwest, our unpredictable weather is slowly beginning to make a turn. Some days are still bitter and cold, but a few here and there are warm and full of sunshine. Grass, that just weeks ago was brown and yellow, is now slightly starting to show signs of life again. Buds are starting to form on the tree branches, and birds are finally returning. And in our home school, I find that we all have less of a desire to do bookwork as spring fever hits in full force and we all desperately want to be outdoors. This week I handed the kids a project, building a mini greenhouse. They all work together, with a few squabbles and arguments in the process, but in less than 30 minutes, the job is finished. We live in Zone 6A. For my fellow gardeners out there, that means that we are hitting the six to eight week mark before the last frost. This is a magical time, a time of planning, dreaming, and as Shay Elliott calls it, garden amnesia. I forget all of my battles with weather and insects from years past and tell myself that this will be the year, the year it all goes right, the year I grow all of my plants perfectly and to abundance. So the kids and I set to work on sowing heirloom seeds. Flowers, tomatoes, peppers, and herbs from Baker's Creek have finally arrived. We have big plans for our suburban garden this year. Thanks to some inspiration from Roots and Refuge Farm, we start by drilling drainage holes in the bottom of some party cups. The younger kids enjoy the counting practice, and everyone is excited for their turn with a power tool. The kids fill all the cups with potting soil. This is a messy project and it's right up their alley. Now I know many of you are thinking, wouldn't it have been faster and easier, and frankly a lot less chaotic, to do this by myself during the baby's nap time? Yes, it would have been. But something I have learned after several years of homeschooling my children get so much more out of hands-on experiences than they do from hours of bookwork. This is the part of our homeschool lifestyle that I love the most, including my kids in my everyday, allowing them the opportunity to learn alongside me as we work on normal home tasks. This often means that projects take us a little longer or that the messes made are quite a bit bigger, but the experience is so worth it. So I encourage you mamas, even when your hands are full, let your littles help you fold towels, wipe counters, and grocery shop. Remember that you are raising future adults. What you do now in these long days and hours will shape the people they become. The life skills you teach them now, they will thank you for later. I know this especially to be true because I have memories from my own childhood of growing tomatoes. This gives me confidence now to try in my own backyard. I would not be a self-respected homeschooler if I did not take this opportunity outside to have my kids work in their nature journals. I ask each of them to choose a seed packet. I have them read the details on the back and make an illustration. We then take a few moments to examine the seeds to marvel at how something so small will grow into something that will feed us in the months to come. 
This simple activity helps to build a personal relationship with our garden. Mariah will now naturally have more ownership and investment in the strawberry patch because she has taken a few minutes to learn more about a specific variety. After they finish working in their journals, the kids head inside for dinner. Take out tonight, thanks to my husband. I stay outside and finish sowing all of the seeds. I take this rare moment to myself to savor the quiet, and I whisper a prayer of thanks for these very first days of spring. If you enjoyed this video, please like it below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I will be making new videos each week about education, homemaking, and everyday life.